The Tesla Model 3 is an amazing looking car from the outside, which is great for everyone else, but as an owner, I have to look at the interior all the time. So following on from the Model 3 review, I thought it was only fair to show you around what the interior of Model 3 is like. So here's a deep dive into just that with a Tesla Model 3 interior review. Surely this can't be the Model 3 interior. I mean, as a kid, I love playing with all the buttons, but I can only find two. And these are these scrolly little wheel things with no writing on them, so I'm not quite sure what they do. And that's the first thing that strikes you when you get in the Tesla Model 3, is the interior is sparse. The design aim was clean and simple. Now I've heard cars described like that before, but this one really is. You've just got a steering wheel, a touch screen that's like a 15 inch iPad, and then a dashboard but there's nothing on the dashboard. There's no air vents that you can see. There's no headlight buttons. There's no fan controls, nothing. If simple and clean was their design goal, the interior designers can tick that as mission accomplished. Before I come on to the few buttons the Tesla Model 3 interior does have, let's look at the centerpiece of this interior design, and that's the touchscreen. And I'm pleased to say the touchscreen works as well as top brand phones. It scrolls smoothly, it's very responsive. You've got familiar gestures to control the map and then it's intuitive to use because they've used obvious icons along the bottom. So for example, if I want the aircon on, I'll just touch the fan. To the right of the map screen, you've got your car status screen, and this changes depending on what the car's doing. So for example, when you're parked, you'll get options to open the boot in the front or the charge port. And when you're driving along, it displays it like a normal instrument panel, including rendering all your surroundings. To the left of the Model 3 status area, you've got this display space here. Uh, generally, I have it set as maps, um, then I'm using it to navigate wherever I wanna go or you can have a look at the cameras if you wanna see what's going on behind you or change some of the car settings as well as you're going along if you don't want the lights on automatic. The only things you can't do while you're going along is watch Netflix, YouTube, or start browsing the web or anything like that. So you can't do any of that yet. Fingers crossed though, we're full self-driving. That's gonna be something we can do in the future so we can just be cruising down on the motorway, watching Netflix while the car drives us wherever we're going. Bad news though if you're an Android Auto or Apple CarPlay fan because you can't integrate this at all. It's all native Tesla software. The good news is they use Google Maps though and we do tap into the traffic information from Google Maps routing so it does help you get around some of the traffic jams. They've used a third party apps like Waze, it's not an option at the minute. The closest thing we have to any Apple integration is the fact that if you go into Apple Maps, choose your destination, go to share and you've got the Tesla app installed, you can just click on that, it sends it through and then it will send the mapping data through to your car. So if you've got a contact in your phone and you can't be bothered to find the address or type in the details, you could choose it through Apple Maps and then it will direct you to that place quite easily. So the maps, as I've discussed before, helps reduce range anxiety. So let's say we'll go back to the hospital there got a bit of a sore throat um, and it will tell you how much charge you'll have when you'll get there and if you scroll up a little bit more it'll tell you how much a round trip is so we've got 68 at the minute it's saying we'll have 65 percent when we get there and if we did a round trip then we would um, have 63 percent so i was just trying to find somewhere really far away just to show you that it routes you through a supercharger and i just clicked on Leeds because I thought that was further enough that we'd run out of charge but it just shows you how far these cars can go because Leeds is 127 miles it's saying we'll get there with 5% charge and our charge is currently 68% so that's pretty decent range but the interesting thing is it's saying stay below 65 mile an hour because obviously above that we're going to use more energy so that didn't really achieve my goal of showing the supercharger so I chose Edinburgh just to demonstrate how far that was away and it will say that we have to stop at the Barnsley supercharger and the Washington supercharger it tells us how much charge we'll have when we get to the superchargers, how long we'll have to stop at each supercharger, and then eventually how much charge we'll end up when we've got into Edinburgh, and that's 346 miles. The other thing as well, which is really good, is this has a live feed for the superchargers, so I can click on that one there. It'll tell me how many stores are available, the charging capacity, the cost of it, and then what facilities they have there as well. So the Barnsley one isn't super quick. Let's have a look at the Durham one. Lots of spaces available and 150 kilowatts, so the version 2 charger there. So it really does kind of put your mind at rest when it comes to range anxiety. If you want to see live traffic information as you're going along, so the red, green and amber lines on the map, that's only included with premium connectivity package. It enables music streaming, internet browsing and then video streaming as well. But at $9.99 a month, it's a little bit steep considering you could just tether your phone and get majority of that bar the live traffic information. 
It's got DAB as you'd expect and the coverage is pretty decent. So you've got a whole list of stations that you can choose from there. You can tether through your phone so you can choose any of the tracks through your phone. If you want to sing along while you're going along, you've got karaoke, karaoke sorry. Um, you need a Wi-Fi connection for that. But as I said, you can tether your phone as you drive along, so that's fine. You've got tune-in radio, which is like internet radio. So again, you can do that. And you've got Spotify as well if you sign in through that. So all you need to do is turn on your hotspot on your phone to get, say, Spotify activated. The car's generally pretty good at finding the network, but if you can never not get it to connect, you just click the LTE symbol, and then you bring up a load of your Wi-Fi networks, so that's connected automatically there. So now my Spotify or my tune-in would work, whereas it didn't obviously earlier. The speakers, in my opinion, in the Tesla Model 3 are pretty decent, but I'm not an audiophile by any stretch of the imagination, so feel free to add comments what your thoughts are on those if you've got some. But this is where there's actually some difference between the partial premium interior and the full premium interior between the different Tesla Model 3s. In the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, you get partial premium interior, which means you effectively get upgraded audio and immersive sound. That's Tesla's words, not mine. Whereas on the Tesla Model 3 long range and performance versions, you get full premium interior, which includes 14 speakers, one subwoofer, two amps, and then the immersive sound as well. I think there's still like 12 speakers in the Tesla Model 3 standard range plus interior. So it's not like you're massively missing out. I think the key differences are there's no subwoofer and no amps. I'll explain the differences between the two interiors a bit later on, because I just want to come back to this main screen a second. Under the car status screen, you can actually swipe left or right to get other things you'd normally expect on an instrument panel. So here we go, some economics of driving. We've got distance since last charge. And if you swipe right, you would have tire pressures displayed here as well. You can also tap the speed limit to set your cruise control speed. And in an update coming soon, it looks like you're going to be able to touch the current speed on to set your cruise control to that speed rather than the speed limit, which is handy because if you're going from a 30 to a 60 and engage cruise control, it can sometimes accelerate a little bit too quick. It would be nice to set the current speed, then gradually increase it using one of the few buttons that are on the car, and that's the scroll wheels. Their functions actually vary depending on the task of the display. While you're driving, you can adjust your speed and the distance for the cruise control, or the volume and a channel for music. So if you go into driver settings, we can adjust the mirrors by scrolling left, right, up, and down. And then if I want to change the right mirror, I'd do exactly the same there. You've got options, obviously, auto fold or auto mirror tilt. That's when you tip it into reverse and it'll tilt down so you can see the curb. You can also do the same for the steering wheel. So we can go out, in, up or down. And then if you like that setting, you can just save it as a driver profile. So you click on that, click save and there you go. Job done. Now, if you have lots of different people driving your car, you can actually set these driver profiles to specific keys. So if someone uses a key to get in, the car will automatically adjust everything to that driver that's got in the car. The chair's got electric adjustment as well. So we can come forwards, backwards, that's on one button. Or we could tilt the chair forward, tilt it back. And then we've got the third button, which is lumbar support as well. And if we want to sit that back to how it was, you just click restore. The fabric in the material is vegan leather, as is the steering wheel. And actually all the materials in the car are vegan as well. Now, the reason we were told we weren't getting a heated steering wheel was because they were worried about how it would respond to being heated up, which worries me because obviously you've got heated seats and it's the same material. So I'm not quite sure how that works. I'm a little bit dubious how these are going to hold up for the years to come, but at the moment they seem to clean down pretty easily and there's no massive wear or tear issues. The back seats, as you'd expect, are pretty similar to the front. I just wish I'd done the rest of the interior review from in here because it's pretty spacious at the back. You've got ample room for three adults because there's no drive shaft, so they can the middle person can actually sit with their feet flat on the floor. And if you are only carrying two, then you do get the standard pull-down armrest just to chill out and relax with your cup holders in the middle. But this doesn't open up, so if you've got skis that you carry around on a daily basis, maybe the Tesla Model 3 is not for you. But the seats do fold down to make a 40-60 split as you'd normally expect. And don't forget it's not a hatchback, it's a saloon car. But all the materials feel pretty robust and pretty nice and high quality. I think I'm going to stay in this section now because it's more comfortable. I don't ever sp spend any time in the back here. Um, you get to choose two different interiors. There's not many options with Tesla, as you probably imagined already. You get the black interior or the white interior. Now, the white interior, you get white vegan leather seats instead. And then some of the other elements are colored white as well. So you get a white dashboard and then white inserts in the doors as well. Whether you go for black or white, though, the center console actually comes in piano black. 
and it's the same that surrounds the door latch, which I found was a fingerprint magnet and probably would scratch really easy. So I just ordered a vinyl overlay to dull it down a bit and I think it works a little bit better. The center consoles themselves are pretty deep as there's no drive shaft or gearbox to speak of. There's space in there to charge two phones. As there's two USB points, you can just plug in underneath and you choose which USB lead to your phone. You can also buy an aftermarket wireless charger pad, which is the way I went, because I've just found that a lot easier. The glove box is pretty secure as well, because the only way you can open it is actually through the touch screen. So let's say you were leaving your car at an airport and you knew someone was gonna actually be driving your car to park it. You could put valet mode in, which disables the option to open your glove box. Above the glove box, you've got fake oak veneer, which stretches the length of the dash. And if you choose the white interior, this is colored white, which someone did point out may reflect the light back up into your eyes. One of the other key features in the Tesla Model 3 interior is this lovely panoramic roof, which your passengers in the back get the most benefit from. In a roof crush test, it said it could hold its own weight up to four times. To put that into context, that was about the same as two African elephants. Tesla also said that the Cybertruck glass was unbreakable. Just saying, if you're in Africa, don't drive under any elephants. So I did lie a little bit, the Tesla Model 3 interior does have more than two buttons. It obviously has buttons to open the windows. Let me just show you what they look like. So that's what the button looks like to open a window. Now, the confusing thing is, is that is the button to open the door. You can tell why passengers get confused, can't you? Now, Tesla have updated that since, and now they've put a little logo of a door opening, so that does make a lot more sense. But you'll find if you've got one of the earlier Tesla Model 3s that you're gonna have to explain how to get out the car quite often to passengers that are new to it. For those that are into that sort of thing as well, these are how far the windows go down in the back for passengers. Now your passengers in the back are slumming it a little because they do get two USB ports, which is pretty decent. But what are these? These old contraptions to control airflow. I mean, who uses such a thing like that anymore? But if you want to control the airflow in the front, you use the touch screen and you've got this cool display that shows you where all the air streams are traveling and you get to choose which direction they go. But whatever you do, don't cross the streams. I've heard that's a really bad thing to do. I just can't remember where I've heard it from or who told me. Anyway, the other bonus is you can control the climate through the app. So let's say you're coming back to the car and it's a bit cold, you can turn the climate control on to preheat your car, including the heat and seats. Or if it's summer and it's hot, you can turn the aircon on so that when you get back to the car, it's gonna be nice and ice cold Tesla Model 3 to jump into. The only two other buttons in the Tesla Model 3 are the hazard warning lights and the SOS button that sit just above the rear view mirror by the dome lights. And I suppose that makes sense because you might need them in an emergency and you always need them accessible. Other than that, you've got your driving sticks, your right stick is to choose your gear, autopilot or cruise control, and if you push it in, that puts you into park. Your left stick are your indicators, you push it in and that'll wipe your windscreen three times, also spray some washer fluid on there. But your windscreen wipers are normally automatic once they detect the rain. And similarly, your full beam, you can flick those full Forward, or they can be auto dimming as well. There's actually very few differences between the Model 3 interior you get with the Standard Range Plus and the premium interior you get with the Performance and Long Range models. You also can't opt for the Model 3 interior to be premium if you're only getting the Standard Range Plus. One thing that will shock you about the partial premium interior is that for £40,000 you do not get floor mats as standard. Your car comes with no floor mats. You can pick them up really easily in the aftermarket, so it's not a big issue and they're relatively cheap. But you'd have thought for the sake of a few quid they'd have thrown them in. The other difference is are you get the speakers, as I've already mentioned. You get premium connectivity thrown in for a year, so that'll save you, what, 120 quid. And the rear seats are actually heated but you can choose that as an option on the app for 300 pounds post purchase. And because they're already built into the car, they will appear in minutes. So you can kind of make your mind up and get that later. So that's it. I've not looked at the boot space or the front on purpose because I covered that in my main Model 3 review video. And I've only touched the surface of the software and the display. Just see what I did there, touch, touch the surface, touch screen. Um, I'm gonna do a bigger video on that in the future. So if you wanna subscribe, then you'll get notified when that comes out because I think that needs a video on its own because there's a lot to that display and that system. If you like that, give it a thumbs up because that really helps boost the channel as well. That would be great. And if you've got any comments or questions, then please put those below and I'll respond as quick as I can. Thanks again for watching. I hopefully see you again soon.